Yo, what's going on? High intensity interval cardio, hit. Interval cardio, what is the best type of cardio to do for fat burning? A lot of questions over the years, and uh, so I want to show you, talk you through a little bit of the technique that's been working really well for me, and I want to do a few, because it's one thing to hear someone say and talk about what is the best cardio, but to actually see the intensity. So most people know uh, that higher intensity cardio for shorter duration is more ideal for one, for a lifestyle, because it's time efficient, but two, to really boost that fat burning effect that we want from cardio. The kind that burns more calories for 12 to 12 hours to 18, 24 hours after you do the cardio session. Um, that's pretty much the idea. If you still, you know, the old, old thought was jogging for low intensity, long duration. If you start burning fat at the 45 minute mark from jogging, then if you jog for an hour and a half, well that's more fat burning and then two hours is more fat burning. And then if you do that every other day, uh, more fat, but it's not, it's uh, cardio kills. Slow, low intensity, long duration cardio kills your time, kills your joints, kills your anabolic hormones, kills your fat burning effect. It eats into your muscle mass. Look at the physique of a long distance runner. Look at the physique of a sprinter. Short duration, high intensity. So the mode that I like best, uh, I'm 53. My, my body's beat up from 35 years of uh, organized athletics. 98%, 95% of my clients are busy business people just trying to make ends meet. They just wanna be healthier. They're not gym rats. So we have to protect the joints. So this is a recumbent bike I'm on. Just wanted to show it to you. I really like the recumbent bike, it's old school, and uh, it works really well because it's, uh, I put the seat a little closer so the knees are closer to the handle, so you're using, it's like a leg press. So it's like a sprint, working your lungs, but it's like a leg press using a lot of muscle fiber and the joints are very safe. That's why I like the, this is a recumbent bike, it's got a seat on the back of it, I don't know if you can see it, but I got a seat back here that I'm sitting on, and so, it's a stationary bike, but it's recumbent. Uh, uh, the one that doesn't have the backrest like this is uh, a regular stationary bike. It's funny, when I first started my personal training career in 2001, I saw the old men uh, at Lifetime Fitness reading the newspaper kick back, and I always thought, and a lot of people think that the recumbent bike is the lazy man's cardio. Well, no, it's amazing. It's the best mode, I think, out there to keep the joints safe, to optimize the fat burning effect and get the most in a short amount of time because the back rest gives you pressure to use those thigh muscles as you're sprinting. So what I usually do is come into my club, the transformation station. I've been waking up at 3, 3.30 a.m., take my time in my uh, apartment, get my food ready, take a shower, be breathing, meditate, come in here, and then I hop on the treadmill for five, 10 minutes, and I just do a little bit of office work on my, on my cell phone and uh, reach out to people or just do whatever I need to do. Do that for about 10 minutes, just sort of gets the blood flow, warms things up. I'll get off. I'll stretch out foam roller, just light stretching. And now I'm back and I'm ready to get in at interval cardio. So I won't be able, I'll be able to talk a little bit. I'm just gonna do three or four cycles. I'll get them done in about six, seven minutes with about one to two minutes rest between sets. So I'm in really good cardiovascular shape right now because I was getting ready for a 5K run with my buddy who trains in here. And we had that, he's 54, he had a, uh, anyway, we had that, like, I'm going to beat you, you know, going back and forth. And uh, I sort of, and he had a couple injuries, like his big toe and stuff like that. So he couldn't train really hard for it. But hey, you know what? <laughs> it's just excuses. He dropped an 85 pound dumbbell on my big toe three, three, two and a half, three weeks before this event. And there was blood everywhere. And it was, I couldn't walk on it. I couldn't wear a shoe for three days. With that being said, I got... I stayed consistent for four to five weeks before that 5K because I had a competition and a bet. And I got more serious about my interval cardio on the treadmill in the morning. M more serious meaning higher intensity for 30 seconds. We're looking for a 30 second all out blitz. And uh, then rest in between, catch your breath back. But what I would do is if I didn't have pressure or a bet or uh, an end goal, I would spend, I would be on my cell phone doing work and I'd spend too much time resting and recovering. 
Um, and so when I made a bet, I, I brought the rest time between the uh, 30 second all out effort down uh, tactfully and I made the 30 seconds probably a little bit more intense. Like I just had a vision of, I gotta win, I gotta beat this guy. So if you're out of shape, walking around the block is a good first start. Drink more water that day. And then the next week, walk a little bit faster with a little bit more tight posture and get into the muscles a little bit more and pick up the uh, intensity slightly, incrementally. It's a delicate, tight walk balance act to be able to do this for yourself because we usually uh, shortchange that and we need a coach to tactfully uh, increase the intensity of the exercise, no matter if it's cardio, like I'm talking now, or weight training. So I'm not trying to sell you on hiring me for a coach. I'm just saying it helps to have an accountability partner. It helps to have a coach. I'm sorry. Yes, that, and it helps to have a goal. So here we go. I'm getting long-winded. Let's get into it. I want to show you what my interval cardio looks like in the morning. So here we go. <clears throat> so I spend about 30 seconds. So I'm on level four. I'm on level four out of 10, which is medium, and I'm around 90 RPMs. So I do that for about 30 seconds, just getting situated, get my feet in the stirrups, and I get situated. I do that for about 30 seconds. So it's a, it's a medium challenge, a medium to high. I'm just getting ready for those 30 seconds that really count. So now that I'm ready for the 30 second all out blitz, 30 seconds is usually the sweet spot, 20, 30 seconds, 40 seconds of an all out effort, trying to uh, just go 100%, everything you got. And so I'm gonna go level 10, and I'm gonna work on keeping that those RPMs right around 110, 110 RPMs, revolutions per minute, uh, and then I'm going to just go like all out for like 10 seconds, so here we go. And the point of the video is, as you get progressed through it quickly, every week you should uh, take the rest periods down, so less. So today I'm gonna do three or four challenges with about a minute rest in between sets, I'm gonna walk it on the treadmill. It's nice to get out of the machine uh, to recover and walk it out. When you first start, there might be four minutes between each challenge. So you have to tactfully and incrementally make those rest periods shorter. The more intense that you do, uh, the less rest between sets, that's where you're really gonna boost some anabolic hormones like human growth hormone and get that response, anabolic response that you want from intense exercise but you gotta focus on your recovery. You gotta focus on your food. You gotta focus on your sleep and rest. And you gotta focus on getting sunlight on the skin and in the eyes, especially in Chicagoland. If you're far away from the equator, the sun, sun exposure, outdoor exposure is almost just as important as the food at helping your body have a, a, a positive electrical energetic balance. That's what we're looking for. All right, here we go. Okay, I got the resistance up to 10. Oh, and I'm keeping those RPMs above 100. Woo. And keep, keep the head up. If you open up the mouth, you're a little bit more powerful, believe it or not. Looking down is low energy, high. Up here is high energy, go. And if it gets down to like an 199, I kick it in the pants and I gotta keep it above 100 RPMs, 10. Nine, eight, seven, I'm at 105, six, three, ah, woo, oh shit. So it burns like a bitch. So I get off the bike, and I come over here to the treadmill. Woo. Oh, and I walk it out nice and slow. So just so you see my treadmill. Oh. Trying to get my breath back. And it helps to walk slowly. Whew. Whew. Oh. Okay. Maybe just a real light hamstring stretch, quad stretch, and then get into the glute. Oh. I gotta get a quick drink of water because I'm parched. And what I'd like you to do is I'm gonna do two more of those cycles. So 
if you guys don't mind, maybe time it for me. Let me know, you know, is it one to two to three minutes in between challenges? Uh, whoo. So here we go, back on the bike. Whoo. Get right back in the game. Level 10. All right, here we go. It's my second challenge for the video. All right, I'm above 100. Whoo. We're visual. So look at that 100 and say there's no way in hell I'm gonna let that RPMs rub fall below 100. 10, 9, 8, come on, 7, ah, 6, 5, 4, whew, ah, ah. oh shit, man. Whew. All right, back on the treadmill. So, it's hard. You gotta play mind games with yourself. When you get near the end of the 30 seconds of the challenge, say, if it falls in the 99s, 90s, someone's gonna do something bad to your business or your kids and get pissed off. Whew. All right, so I think that was less rest. Let's do two more, just so we can get an idea. Uh, here we go. Challenge number three for the video. All right. Resistance up to 10. Legs are, bur they, the legs burn like a bitch at the end of this. Ooh, using handles to, to hold your butt in the seat. All right, I'm above 100. It's getting harder to keep it above 100 at this point. Oh, it's 102, 101, kick it back up, go. 10, nine, uh, go, uh, ha, 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 oh, shit. Oh, oh man, walking out helps, I know I said that. So, I think you get the point. So, the takeaways on how to evolve your cardio to maximize your anabolic hormone output, growth hormone, testosterone naturally. Oh, just so you know. The intensity of weight training, control light weights to failure. The intensity to cardio, like this, high intensity interval, high intensity, H-I-I-T, high intensity interval training, it's referred to as, or interval cardio. Six weeks ago, I was going through the motions, resting five, six minutes between sets. Probably more than that, because you get on the computer and you're doing work. Oh, shit. The only way I can optimize the session, let me back up. The intensity of rate weights or cardio, if you're focused on improving your rest and recovery, sleep, food, you gotta fuel the machine, you gotta eat more food into this. That's the cool thing about lifting weights and using interval cardio, that, that took me what? I don't know, five minutes total. You can do that after your weight training session or on days you don't do weight training, first thing in the morning, preferably. It takes you 20 minutes. If you don't have a recumbent bike, you gotta figure out something else. But you gotta make sure you keep the joints safe. Whoo. So the point was six weeks, I've always done interval car in the morning, but if I didn't have a goal, if I didn't have an emotional reason why and someone to beat, I, don't, I sort of don't need a coach because I coach people and I know how to evolve the cardio with less rest between the sets of challenges. So six weeks ago when I didn't have a plan of action and I didn't have an emotional charge to getting consistent, and plus I'm staying on stage in uh, two weeks in Philadelphia in front of 800 people 
at a business convention and I'm not gonna have my business suit on like the other speakers, if you know what I mean. I'm showing my skin at 53 and how I've improved my bad joints uh, so that they can have a hope that they can do the same as well. So it's not about me as much as it is about the story that they can do it too. So for the average person, you gotta get a goal, get an emotional charge wide, you gotta get a deadline, F five, six weeks and evolve, whatever you're doing, but in this case, the cardio session to optimize the high intensity. So starting out, if you got a little bit of a base, like walk, power walking, you know, a little light jogging, that's a little bit of a base. Go towards that intensity, maybe go level eight or nine, and then maybe 80, 90 RPMs, and you rest four minutes between sets. Something like that, so get off stretch. Then the next week, then you rest three minutes between sets of the challenges. I'm talking four or five of those. I just did three, I believe. Something like that, 15, 20 minutes, you're done. I hope this helps, comment below. Hit me up with any questions on how you could personalize your cardio to get the results that you want in a time efficient manner so it can be a lifestyle habit. You do have the power to change to make the rest of your life the best of your life.